So what a difference a year makes, right? So we're here a year later. This is a recap of uh, 2013, and we believe that the Lord has even greater things for us in 2014. How many believe that the Lord has good things for you in 2014? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we wanted to begin 2014, and we wanted to begin the year talking about uh, someone who is so precious to us, and that Jesus said, without him, you can't do anything, and that person is the Holy Spirit. Amen? So let's go ahead and uh, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 2, 2 Kings 2, and there's a story there of, uh, of two prophets, Elijah and Elijah. Elijah and Elisha, and uh, these two prophets uh, of God, they're going to teach us uh, a precious lesson this morning, and, uh, and it has to do with the desire for, for more of God. It has to do with the desire for the things of God. It has to do with, um, with um, our desiring to be filled with God even more. See that our relationship with God is progressive. We are walking with God. We're in a progressive relationship with God where we're maturing in the things of God. Um, but we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because it's the Holy Spirit that enables our walk with God. Without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing we can do. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Elijah ascends to heaven. This is Elijah, the older prophet, uh, who ascends to heaven. Verse 1 of chapter 2 of Second Kings and it says, And it came to pass, when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went to Elisha from Gilgad. Then Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elijah said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. So the prophet, the older prophet Elijah said to Elijah, he says, you need to stay here because I need to go to Bethel. See, there was something that God was already doing in the prophet, in the older, in the Elijah, in the older prophet. And the younger prophet, the apprentice or the disciple, knew that God was about to do something in Elijah. So the younger prophet wanted to be present. He wanted to be present while God did whatever he was going to do in his, in his mentor, in the person that was discipling him. So the older one says to the younger one, stay here. But the younger one says, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to stay next to you. I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to follow you wherever you go. And see, that's the essence of our relationship with God right there. That's the essence, that we stay close to the master. Amen? That we stay close to Jesus. That's the essence of discipleship and our relationship with God. And, and as a, as in a nutshell, what I'm going to talk to you about this morning is about that concept of staying close to the Master, staying close to Jesus, that whatever pulls you in different directions, that you would learn, that I would learn, that we would learn to say no to the things that pull us away from Him, and that we will make a choice in 2014 to stay close to Jesus and to stay by His side. Amen? So he said to the prophet, he said to the younger uh, Elijah, he said, stay here. But then the, he said to, the, to his master, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now Bethel was the first, Bethel represents the first test or the first place in which they would go to where the older prophet said to the younger one, I'm going to go there, stay here. Bethel is the place that he would go to. And so Bethel means house of God. And Bethel is a place of revelation. See, whenever we, we stay close to the Lord, whenever we decide and choose to follow the Lord, wherever we choose to say to Jesus, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever, Jesus, you lead me, I will go. Jesus, wherever you want to do in 2014, I am with you. I am by your side. Wherever you decide to take me in 2014, I'm there. See, he will take you to Bethel. He will take you to the house of God. And the house of God is a place of revelation. So I want to I want to suggest to you this morning that 2014 is a year of revelation. It's a year in which your eyes will be open to the truth of God like never before. That the truth of God will open to us. That the things of God will open to us like never before. See, 
What the people of the world and what this world suffers is from blindness, blindness, spiritual blindness. The world cannot see the things of God. The world cannot comprehend the things of God. The world does not understand the things of God. And sadly, we as Christians can fall into the same, into the same issue, into the same uh, problem, where we're not seeing God. We're not seeing what God wants to do. See, that's something that Christians suffer from spiritual blindness a lot of times. And see, God wants to open your eyes today. He wants to open my eyes today so that I can see clearly and I can get a revelation of the kingdom of God in my life. Now, why is that so important? Why is seeing clearly what God wants so important? Well, because when we see clearly, we can pray more effectively. See, when we see clearly, we have more boldness in terms of our lives and, and our walk with God and, and in terms of what we're supposed to do in God. We have boldness. See, that we're not walking in blindness. We're not walking not knowing where we're going, but we are sure and we are uh, convinced that God is with us and we can have boldness in everything that we do. And see, you need that boldness in your life. You need to have that confidence in your life to approach or to deal with whatever comes your way. See, because a, a lack of confidence diminishes your anointing. When you lack confidence in your life, your anointing diminishes. See, God has anointed you as a believer and as a Christian. You and I have been anointed by God. We have an anointing. The anointing is the supernatural ability in my life to do what God wants me to do. It's a supernatural ability. Without the anointing, you can't do anything for God. That's the reality. Without the anointing, we can't do anything for God or in God. That's why Jesus said, separated from me, you can do nothing. In other words, he was saying, without my anointing your life, without me enabling you to do this, you can't do it. 2014, I want it to be at least for me, and I want that to be for you, a year in which we see the will of God fulfilled in our lives, where we can act with boldness, we can walk with boldness, we can live this life with boldness for God. And not be diminished in our ability to perform the will of God in our lives. But a lack of confidence diminishes your anointing. See, a lot of times we say, man, I love that person how they are because, you know, the God is in them. You, they're bold. They have faith. I can, man, the way they speak and the way they talk. See, that comes from God. That comes from God. It's not a personality thing. It's not a thing that they just, you know, they just, they're just better than, than me or they're just more charismatic than me. No, that's an ability that comes from God to be godly, to be able to speak on behalf of God. When, you, when you're talking to people, when you're counseling people, when you're advising people, when you're helping people, we need to have that boldness in our lives to, to come on behalf of God. We are his agents. We are his messengers. Amen? See, but we need that anointing in our lives. See, revelation brings that clarity. Revelation brings clarity so that you can withstand anything that comes your way. In the midst of whatever pressures or circumstances, when you have clarity and when you know where you're going, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Criticism can't stop you. People saying things about you can't stop you. Even your own flesh can't stop you because you're clear about what you're supposed to do. But many of us are still unsure today. Some of us, you know, we've gone into 2014 thinking, you know, there's got to be a better year. I got to do better. I got to do that. Because you're unsure. You're not clear about, you know, you're, you're not, your convictions are not really, you know, you're not living on your convictions. You see, God wants us to be living on those convictions that he's given us in that boldness. So when revelation comes you can pray more effectively. You have boldness in your life. You have revelation of the scriptures of the Bible. You have clarity concerning the will of God. See, Bethel is a place of revelation. See, Elijah went to Bethel. Elisha said, I'm not staying here. I'm going there with you. See, that was the first test. See, because it was this relationship between a, a teacher and a student. A, 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 a rabbi type, a, a prophet, and, and a disciple. Where, see, the, the point was this, that everybody knew that, that Elijah, the prophet, the older one, was to go to heaven soon. He was to go with God soon. He was going to leave 
them. And the younger prophet Elijah knew this. And, but he knew also that he needed to be present before he left. Because before he left, he wanted the blessing of God in his life. He wanted his mentor to bless him. He wanted his master to bless him. He wanted his teacher to bless him. So he wanted to be present there while that happened. See, some of us are not present for the blessing of God in our lives. Some of us are so busy doing our, our own thing that we're not present where God really wants to bless us. See, there are moments in our lives where God wants us to be in a specific place, in a specific moment, in a specific time where he wants to bless you in that moment. But if you're not present in that place, you're not going to get it. That's the reality. See, you, we need to be present there. See, that's where favor comes in. See, sometimes we say, well, you know, I, I, I want to be favored by God. Well, if we want to be favored by God, make sure you're there at the right time, at the right place when God is ready to favor you. See, we need to be available to the Lord. That's the story of every person in the Bible. They needed to be available to God in order for God to pour out that blessing upon them. Jesus said to the disciples, before you do anything, stay here. Wait for the promise of the Father. The anointing is going to come upon you. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. But you need to wait here. I can imagine one of the ladies saying, you know what? But man, it's, it's New Year's Eve. I mean, I, I got to go do this or I got to go do something else. Or it's Black Friday. I got to go shopping. You know, I got to go do this. I mean, we could come up with any excuse not to be there at that moment. But see, this is the year where we need to understand and discern the opportunities that God is putting in front of us. And then we need to make a decision and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to make, make it a priority to be there. I'm going to decide 2014 that I'm going to be ready to receive the blessing that God has for my life. I want to be in that place at that moment when God pours out that blessing upon my life. I want to be there. It ain't going to be at the club, I'm telling you. It's not going to be at the club. You may, bless, you may get blessed some other way, but not this way, okay? And I don't know if that's a blessing, okay? But see, God wants to bless you in a good way. So Bethel was that place of revelation. So let's keep on reading. So they went down to Bethel, verse 3. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Quiet. I know. You don't have to remind me of that. I'm aware of the fact that God is going to take away my master. He's taking him with him. I know that. Verse 4, then Elijah said to him, the older prophet said to the younger prophet, now they're in Bethel now. And he said to the younger one, Elijah, stay here, please. For the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. Now they go on to Jericho. And he says to the younger prophet he says Elijah Elisha stay here and then the younger prophet says to the older one he says as the Lord lives and as you, your soul lives I will not leave you here we see it again that persistence I will not leave you I will stay by your side because I know the anointing rests upon you. I know the blessing of God is on you. I know God has favored you and I will not leave your side. So you've got to recognize where the blessing of God is. And when you recognize where the blessing of God is, stay close to it. Stay close to it. Where the anointing of the Lord is, stay close to it. See, it's the, it's the opposite of, you know, when you see trouble. What do you do when you see trouble? You run. You go the opposite, opposite direction. The Bible says that the wise man sees trouble ahead and goes the other way. See, when there's trouble, we turn the other way. But when we see the blessing of God, that's where we go, where the blessing of God is. Wherever God is blessing, that's where you go. And you say, hey, God is blessing. And I'm going to stay close to the man of God, to the people of God. Elijah Elijah says to his master, the Lord lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now Jericho represents conquest. That was that place that Joshua came over and with the people and they took it over where they marched around the walls of the city 
and those walls came tumbling down. See, that's a, that's a place of conquest. So I believe that 2014 is a year of conquest. It's a year of revelation, but it's a year of conquest. What does that mean? That means that there are things out there that the Lord wants me to go after. There are things out there that the Lord wants me to conquer. There are things out there that I have to pursue, that I got to go after. See, I, the, those things have been given to me. Those things have been already given to me, to you by God. But you got to do your part. You got to fight for those things. You got to go out there and conquer those things. Jericho was a place that God had said, I'm giving you this. It's yours. But they had to go in out there and march. They had to go out there and fight. So I want to encourage you, 2014. Let me say it this way, and I know I may offend somebody, okay, but I don't mean it this way. Please get off your butt, okay? 2014 is a year to get off your, 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 you know, that nice, comfortable place that you're in. We need to rise up in 2014. You want to see the blessing of God, you need to rise up. So you, ne you need to have a conquering spirit. You need to, you can't just say, well, you know, I don't know. Well, if the Lord gives it to me, then, you know, if, if it happens, it happens. It's not that type of year. I believe it is a year that, 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 that we have to do violence in the kingdom of God. Not violence in the physical, but in the kingdom of God, where we got to go after it and, and, and grab a hold of it. You got to grab a hold of that. See, it requires persistence. You say, Pastor Joe, you know, this year I want to lose some weight. This year I want to look my best. This year I want to look sharp. I want to, well, you know what? Sitting in front of the TV eating Cheetos ain't going to do it. <laughs> right? So it's a year of conquering those habits. It's a year of conquering those things that have slipped away before. Maybe in the past it hasn't happened. You said, well, I've tried before and it doesn't work. Well, this is a year that God is saying right here. It's in front of you but you got to go after it. It's a year of conquest. See, Jericho represents that conquest. And so the younger prophet was willing to stick with his master and go there too as well. See, we got to be willing to go with Jesus where he wants to take us. See? He, he and, see and it was a test. That's why he said, well, you know, just stay here. You know, no, that's okay. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything. See, we got to conquer our ministry as well. We got to conquer our ministry. See, God's given us a ministry. Let me say this to you. Everybody here has a ministry from God. Everybody here. Everybody has a ministry. Now, your ministry is what God has assigned you to do, what he's called you to do. Okay? Some of us have given up on our ministry. But that's the wrong thing to do. I'm going to flat out say to you, you're wrong if you've let go of your ministry. You're wrong. You're wrong in this sense because you're accountable to God for that ministry that God has given you. No one else is accountable for your ministry. Only you are. And the only way for us to be right with God is to let go and to release what God has put in us. Is to give. To give it away. If God's giving you a talent, God wants you to put it to work. God's giving you an ability, God wants you to put it to work. God's giving you a gift, God wants you to put it to work. If you withhold that, and if you hold it for yourself, guess what? When you go to the presence of God, he's going to say about that one thing that you withheld, he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? Now let me say something to you. Whatever you gave away, you're not responsible for Whatever you gave away, you're not responsible for. Let me give you an example. Let's say the Lord gave me $1,000. To, to, he said, this is, I want you to sow this, or I, I want you to administer this money, $1,000. And I paid all my bills, and I took whatever I did, whatever. I'm, I'm said, but I got $1,000, and I'm trying to think, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with this money? And the Lord says, I want you to give that away. Okay? Well, let's say I don't give it away. When I get to heaven... He's going to say, what did you do with that $1,000 I gave you? And it's, I still have it with me. Now, you might say, well, no, I spent it. I mean, I went and bought me this and this, this and that. Well, no, it's still in your possession because you kept it to yourself. Obviously, we're not taking anything to heaven with us, right? 
But the idea of you keeping that to yourself, you are responsible for that. But if all of a sudden, you know, I, you know it's like a hot potato I have in my hand. Man, I got this $1,000. Man, I got to do something with this. This is God's. I got to do something with it. This is God. He put this in my hand, but it's not for me to keep it. I need to give this away. And I give it away, and I give it to the person that God says, you need to give it to this minister or to this ministry or to this person or whoever, however it is that I give it away. The minute I give it away, I'm not responsible for that anymore. That's it. Who's responsible for that? It's the other guy. It's the hot potato, right? Here you go, man. You're responsible for this. It's in your hands. Here's the thing. All of us have a hot potato in our hands right now. All of us. You have a hot potato. And if you keep it to yourself, you know how the game is, right? The game is going and the music ends. You don't want it to be in your hands because you go, oh, man, no. And because you got to have to pay, you're responsible for that. See? We need to give it away. Give it away. Give it away. See, I'm not talking about being irresponsible with our gifts. I'm not talking about being irresponsible with our money. I'm talking about understanding that God has blessed me with resources. God has blessed me with talents. God has blessed me with abilities. And as he's blessed me, I'm also supposed to bless somebody else with that. I'm supposed to give it away. See, your ministry. And so this year, you're going to have to fight for your ministry. You're going to have to fight for it. Don't let no one stop you from being a minister of the Lord. Don't let anyone stop you from your ministry. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Because it's what God called you to do. But you're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to start marching into Jericho and to conquer that. See, the thing about service is we'll get involved in the church and we'll start serving, right? Maybe the first, you know, it, sometimes it's like, well... You know, I'm doing this, but I don't know. You know, I'm serving and this, this, and that. See, it's by faith. When they were going around the walls, they were going by faith. They were marching around the walls. But it was until God, they fulfilled the commandment of the Lord, and they did what, exactly as the Lord told them, the walls came down, tumbling down. And that's what happens with your ministry. See, you know, I, I don't need to have money to be a minister. You need money because money helps you do things. But if I had to start with no money, I have no problem doing that. Because I already know I have something inside of me that already works. And it works better than money. And it's an anointing. See, if you're anointed, you're going to start marching even if you don't have the resources. You're going to start marching because you know you've been anointed by God and you have something in you. See, because what happens is, when you put it to work, and when you begin to do it, and as you march around Jericho, and as you march around the walls, and as you go around the walls, even though you're like, well, you know, I've been serving God for some time, but I don't see anything, Lord. Lord, I've been doing this, God, and, and I haven't seen anything yet, and, and I haven't seen it. See, you got to pay the price. you got to be consistent. you got to be persistent. you got to conquer and, and you, got, you can't stop until you see the walls come tumbling down. And I'm telling you, it happens. You're persistent. You do it. You do it. You do it. And God honors those who honor him. And sooner or later, as you're serving God, then you begin to see the walls come tumbling down. All of a sudden, you, you begin to see purpose happening. You begin to see things happening in your life. And you begin to see things changing and things that you desired, things that you wanted, and dreams and things that you thought about, you know, that maybe you gave up, gave up a long time ago. All of a sudden, those things begin to happen again because you're persistent. 2014, it's a year of revelation. God's going to open your eyes to truth like never before. It's a year of conquest where you are going to be able to conquer things that you have never conquered before, but you're going to need to fight for those things. So then he says there in... In, in Jericho, verse 5, Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take your, away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Verse 6, Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. The Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Jordan is a place of maturity. 
It's a place of maturity. See, it was where Jesus, at age 30, he went to the waters of the Jordan. He was baptized in that place. See, baptism is a, is a very significant thing in our walk with God. Because when we're baptized in waters, if you haven't been baptized with water, we would encourage you to go to the Jordan, to take this, pass this test, and to go to the Jordan. If you want to go to Israel, that's fine. Okay, you know, you can do that. But the Jordan means baptism. It's where Jesus was baptized. And see, when you, be, when you get baptized, you become a candidate for discipleship. You become a candidate for discipleship. And that's where maturity begins. You start maturing as a Christian. See, revelation comes, and all of you, see, maturity is your senses understanding the spiritual things around you. That's what maturity is. See, we got to stop making the mistakes of the past. I know we all make mistakes, and it's guaranteed that we're going to make mistakes this year. But you know what? There are some mistakes that we should never make, especially the ones that God clearly says don't do this, and we out of we dis dis disobey God on that. See, that's not a mistake. That's, that's, a, 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 that's a blatant being disobedient, just saying, I'm going to be disobedient to God because you know that is wrong. See? And if you take away all the things where we're disobedient to God, if you take away all those things, if you all of a sudden just, you know what, just, you know what, you've made no mistakes at all. I guarantee you that. You're going to look at your life and you're going to say, you know what, I haven't made any, any mistakes. Because the Lord is leading you. You know, there, it's funny because social media, if you're on Instagram or Twitter or any of those things, there's so much stuff on like, you know, oh, no, it's okay, you know, you're going to make all the mistakes, but you're going to learn from them. All this like, you know, feel good stuff, you know, and all that. That is, that is not the word. It's not the word. Most of those things are not the word. It's just, you know, self-help, you know, makes you feel good stuff. And a lot of times, oh, it's okay. Keep making mistakes. It's okay. Keep making those mistakes because you weren't born to make mistakes, but that's okay. That's who you are. But let me tell you, that's not who you are. You are defined not by the world says. You're defined by what the word of God says. So they went to Bethel, the house of God, Revelation. They went to Jericho which was conquest. They went to Jordan, which is maturity. And he passed all of these three tests. The Bible says that he went with him and did not leave him at all. Verse 7, Then fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance. This is at the Jordan. While the two of them stood by the Jordan. And look at what happened, verse 8. Then Elijah took his mantle. He rolled it up. And struck the water. And it was divided this way and that. So that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. So there was a miracle. The two of them crossed on dry ground. See, that we need to be walking in the place of miracles. See, our lives need to be filled with miracles. See, our lives need to be filled with miracles. One of the miracles that we showed up here, right after we said prayer requests, we had the PFC, some of the PFC group on the picture there, and then we had two pictures. We had the picture of Nathan. See that little baby that was holding onto mom's hand? You see how small he was? And then we had the other picture right after. That is a miracle. That is a miracle. We saw that miracle. And we continue to see miracles happen in our lives. Our church needs to be a place of miracles. We need to be a people that continually talk about the miracles that God does in our lives. Because when you're focused and you're talking about the things that the Lord has done, you have no time to complain about the things that are not where they're supposed to be. You have no time to criticize somebody else because of whatever they did or didn't do. You have no time to be comparing yourself to other people, whether you have or you don't have. When you have miracles in your life, you're always thanking the Lord. You're living in a place of thankfulness. You just, you're just thankful to God for all the things that he does. And let me tell you that that is so powerful. That is so powerful. Because you, you know that the best is yet to come. Miracles. They're walking in that miracle. The waters divide up. 
and they walk over dry ground. Verse 9. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elijah, you passed the test. You passed Bethel. You passed Jericho. You passed the Jordan test. And what does the master say to the student? He says to him, ask, ask, ask. See, this is what I love about God. That in our journey, once we pass the test, then the Lord says, ask, ask. What may I do for you? before I'm taken away from you. What can I do for you? See, this is, this is wonderful because there comes a place in a moment, and I've seen this both as a parent and also as a pastor, where you, where you see that God is working in your children or your spiritual children, and God is dealing with them. God is, there's a formation going on. There's a discipleship going on. There's a there's a, a development going on. And you kind of just watch, and they go through this, and they go through that, and then you're praying for them, and you're in their lives, and you're making sure that they're okay. And, you know, and, 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 and they might cry out and say, well, I want this. Or they might complain about that and say, well, I, you know, I don't have this, and I don't have that. And you just watch them, and you say, you know what? They're, they're maturing. They're growing. And there comes a moment as a parent and as a pastor that you see them cross over that you see them overcome, that you see them mature, that you see them and you go, oh, wow. You can see it right there, how they mature, how they grow, how they pass the test. Not that you're testing them, but it's just the work of God. And all of a sudden, you feel like saying, you know what? What do you want? I'm willing to give you whatever you want. It happens. With my children, I do the same thing. There's times I'll be like, no, can't have that. No, 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 Dick, no, no, no. Because if I wouldn't be really doing them a favor when they're not maturing, they're not growing, they're, I'm just giving them stuff just to pass the time. I mean, I may do something like that, but overall, you want to reward somebody for something that, you know, because you want to recognize a milestone in their life. Kind of like when you get a reward and you get, you know, you get a certificate or something. It's a milestone. So a lot of times, like, Dad, can I have that? Can I? No, that game is not good for you. Dad, can I get this game? No, I don't think so. Heck no, I'm not buying you that game. Right? But then comes a place where all of a sudden they mature and they grow. And then you, they're not even asking for anything. And you go to them and you say, hey, you know, I, I got some money. What, what do you want? What do you want? And they're looking at you crazy like, what? You mean I could ask for anything and you'll give it to me? Yes, go for it. This is what happens here. The master, the teacher, the parent tells the child, the student, the son, he says, ask, what do you want? Because he recognizes now that he's at a place where he's matured, where he has conquered where he, he can see things now. He has revelation. And see, I believe that that's what God wants us to do. See, I believe that God has all these wonderful things prepared for us. I believe that the Lord has all these wonderful things that he wants to give us. I really believe that. I really believe that God has a, a, a warehouse full of stuff that he wants to give me. But you know what? My eyes need to be open. So that when he gives it to me, I don't mess it up. You know, when he gives it to me, I don't go and destroy that. When he gives it to me, I know how to appreciate what he gave me. There's a bunch of stuff that he's got prepared for me. So I got to step it up. I got to step it up. I got to take it to the next level. Whatever that level is, it's not so much, you know, maybe what I think, but it's just going, you know, staying close to Jesus and just going to Jesus and staying close to the Holy Spirit. And, you know, that's what I've learned up to this point. It's not, you know, I, I can go and get these workshops and I can go and get all these seminars about being a pastor and all that stuff is all good. But the thing that's going to make the biggest difference in my life is whether I stay close to Jesus. That's the one thing. That's going to take my ministry to the next level more than anything else. Staying close to the Lord. Because there, 
Whoa, you see it. All of a sudden you get a picture. Get revelation. You see what you didn't see before. All of a sudden you get that boldness. You say, you know what? We can do this. We can go after the, our enemies. We can go and pursue this. We can, we, that boldness comes. All of a sudden that maturity where you're not going to go and mess it all up because you're mature. You know, you, you, you've, you've been trained by the Lord. The Lord's training you to make choices, make decisions where he gives you something now to steward, and you're not going to go and, and waste it and destroy it because you're mature enough. That is what the Lord has for us in 2014. I could tell you, and I could say to you, you know what? You know, it's things, it's mater material stuff, but you know what? The material stuff is secondary. All that stuff will come when this when this is done first. Let me close with this. So the master says to the student, the teacher says to the student, the parent says to the son, he says, ask, what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you? Elijah said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. He says, I want what you have. A double portion of that. That's what I want. I want what you have. I want the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, the way God manifests in your life. That's what I want in my life. I want the kingdom of God in my life. He said to him, you've asked for a hard thing. Let me say to you this morning, the hardest thing you're going to do this year is stay close to Jesus. That will be the hardest thing that you're going to do. You know why is it going to be hard? Because there's going to be a lot of things getting in the way. But it's the one thing that I believe all of us must do. Seek after him. And he will give it to you. We're going to start the fast, 21 days of fasting. Some of you guys, it will be the hardest thing you've ever done for some of you, the 21-day fast. Maybe you've never done it before. Some people that have never done it, literally they go four or five days starving themselves. Poor people. Look, Pastor Joe, I can't do this anymore. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. What are you doing? I haven't eaten for five days. Why not? Why haven't you eaten? I don't know. On the paper, there's nothing to eat there. I don't even know what that stuff is. But you know what? The hardest things will bring the greatest rewards. The hardest things will bring the greatest rewards. So I want to encourage you in this year, to go after it. Amen? Go after the Lord. Go after the things of God. Don't let the enemy stop you. Don't let the world stop you. Don't let you stop you. Go after it. And you're going to conquer in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen.